999. A thousand. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Westside Vineyard Kids Church Online! I'm so excited that we have another chance for us to train together for our big race at the end of the month. Any kind of training takes commitment. What is commitment? Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. We need commitment to train for a race. We also need commitment if we're going to grow in our relationship with God. If we want to do what Jesus said is the most important thing, to love God and love other people. That's why today we're continuing our Love God, Love Others training plan. But first, we got to warm up. We got to get up on our feet so that the oxygen is pumping in our lungs and that we've got the blood pumping through our brains and our bodies so that we can get ready to hear God's word. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better way to warm up than to worship. We have so many reasons to sing and to praise Jesus together. Jesus came to earth, he lived, he died on the cross, and he rose from the dead. And you know what? That was all about love. Let's celebrate the love of Jesus. Come on, everybody, let me hear you sing. Bible. 
It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. It's the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and had their lives changed forever. And now, Coach Jesus gives us our practice plan for prayer, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 11. You know, there are just a whole bunch of things that we don't know about Jesus. For example, what was his favorite food? What kinds of games did he like to play when he was growing up? How many brothers and sisters did he have? But there is one thing that we definitely know about Jesus. He loved to pray. He made it a habit in his life. He would slip away from crowds of people and spend time talking to his father, God. In fact, Jesus made a habit of prayer. He would even slip away early to spend time in the quiet with God before the crowd showed up. His closest friends, the disciples, saw how important prayer was to Jesus. But they had some of the questions you might have. When should I pray? What kind of word should I use? How do I talk to someone I can't see with my eyes? Today's portion of our Love God, Love Others training plan is a training plan for prayer. We're gonna look at how Jesus told us to pray. And like we learned last week when we practiced hearing from God, the best place to look for truth from God is in the Bible. Praying is simply a fancy word for talking to God and you can do it anytime. One day, one of Jesus' disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus answered his friend with a simple example, and it's an example that we use to this day. You might actually know this prayer already, or you might have learned it with slightly different words. It is a wonderful prayer to memorize, so we have it deep in our hearts, and we have something to say even when we're not sure what we want to pray about. You can find this prayer in Luke chapter 11. Jesus told the disciples, when you pray, this is what you should say. Father, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Now we don't have to stick to those exact words. We can take some ideas from that prayer and make them our own. I've asked Mr. Josh, Mr. Jeff, and Mr. Ronner to show you what I mean. Here's how Jesus started his prayer. Father, may your name be honored. Jesus called God Father. We can call him Father too. He's the best parent ever, a perfect one. And he loves us so much. God deserves to be honored. He made heaven and earth. He made each one of us watching this video and those of us making it too. He made everyone you will ever meet. He made us in his image. We are his sons and daughters. When we pray, we can say, Father, may your name be honored. Or we could say something like this. God, thank you for being my father. Thank you for loving me. I praise you, God, for who you are and for all that you've done in my life. Thanks, Ron. See, our prayers don't have to just be about what we want or need. We can take time to honor God and thank him for everything he's done. Let's look at the next part of the prayer. May your kingdom come. Prayer is not making God do something for us. God is our king. He made everything in this world, everything and everyone. He is in control of the whole world and everything we see. He has a good plan for our lives. God's kingdom means things happen the way they're supposed to, the way God planned for them to happen. When we say your kingdom come, we're asking God for things to be the way he wants them to be, good, right, and true. We're asking him to help us to be part of what he's doing to make things right in the world. God's kingdom comes when we show our love to him and by giving his love to those around us. So when we pray, we can say, may your kingdom come, or we can say something like this. God, you are a magnificent king. 
your kingdom is full of love and peace and kindness, Lord. Help me to show others your love and help to make your kingdom get bigger each and every day. That was great. Thanks, Josh. Let's look at the next part of the prayer. Give us each day our daily bread. Okay, let's see. We have white bread, rye, the weird nutty kind, gluten-free, Kaiser roll, mm, tortilla. Actually, this part of the prayer isn't about bread. It's not even just about food. Jesus was saying that God gives us everything we need. All good things in our life are gifts from God. We can pray and ask God for the things that we need and for the things that other people need too. Praying reminds us that God is the one in our lives who truly takes care of us and is always there to care for us. When we pray, we can say what Jesus said. Give us each day our daily bread. Or we could say something like this. Thank you God for giving me everything I need. From the breath in my lungs to the beating of my heart. From the sun that comes up in the morning to the rain that comes down. Um, you give us food and family and friends. I thank you for everything that you give me, Lord, and I pray that today you would give me everything that I need and that you would give other people everything that they need. And we know that we can trust uh, that you work all things together, Lord, that you have a good plan for each of us, Lord, and that you will provide exactly what we need. Thanks, Jeff. That was awesome. All right, let's look at the last part of what Jesus prayed. Forgive us our sins, as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. Jesus knew that his friends were a lot like us. They weren't perfect. There is not a single day that we do not mess up in some way. We snap at our little brother. We laugh along when other kids are making fun of the new girl. We sneak an extra cookie without asking. Jesus knew that it was super important for us to talk to God when we mess up because God will always forgive us and give us a fresh start. When we've experienced God's forgiveness for ourselves, that helps us to be forgiving to others too. And the part about being tempted, well, Jesus knew that we would face tough situations every day that would threaten to trip us up. Times when you would maybe be tempted to act in a way that doesn't show God's love to others. And in those moments, you can use God's strength as a lifeline to carry you through. Okay, there is a lot packed into that simple prayer. But if you found a quiet place and put it into your own words, it might sound something like this. Dear Father, there is no one like you. Please help all of us to show your love to each other. Give us everything we need to get through today. Please erase all the wrong things I've done and help me not to hold on to the wrong things others have done to me. Give me your strength to keep from doing anything that hurts you or anyone else today. In your name, amen. Do you see how we can say Jesus' prayer in a lot of different ways? Of course, it is great to use the words that Jesus used. It's actually a great idea to memorize this prayer. But it helps to know that when you pray, you, there aren't any exact words you have to use. God loves it when we get creative. God loves it when we take the ideas from this prayer and make them our own. You can talk to God anywhere, anytime, about anything. You can say what's on your heart and mind and in your own words, and it always helps to practice. This week, let's remember this. Practice praying to God. Whether it's 20 seconds or 20 minutes, it fills God's heart with joy when you choose to connect with Him. 999 trillion, 999 billion, 999 million, 999,992. 999 trillion, 999 billion, 999 million, 999,993. 999. Wait, I lost my count. One. It's so good to know that we can talk to God about anything that's happening in our lives. God loves us, and He loves it when we pray to Him.
You can talk to him when you need wisdom and you're not sure about what to do. You can talk to him when you feel scared or nervous or upset. You can talk to him when things are going great and you just want to say thank you. And remember, you don't need to be here at church to pray. You can pray to God when you're lying in bed before you go to sleep, before you eat a meal with your family, when you're on the bus on the way to school or in the middle of your soccer game. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. Praying is a great way to stay connected to God and to grow closer in your relationship with Him. That's why praying is an important part of our training plan. Remember, practice praying to God. Whether praying is something that you've always done with your family or if it's just brand new, remember, God is always there for you. You can trust him no matter what. You can talk to him about anything that's going on in your life because he loves you. So, how do you like to pray? Does it make you feel closer to God when you do? Think about it. And then, do it. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. One, two, three.